Who made initiation? From the book, Homemade Magic. Uh, this first edition was by Llewellyn. A new edition is coming out very, very soon. It may be called Homemade Magic, My Life with the Spirits, Part 2, or Volume 2, whatever we call it. A new, improved, enlarged edition is forthcoming. But we're on Chapter 3, Homemade Initiation. Little epigram is from Alistair Crowley's uh, Libra 61 Velp Kaze. In all systems of religion is to be found a system of initiation, which may be defined as the process by which a man comes to learn that unknown crown. I didn't know what exactly to expect when I mailed my membership application and money to the Rosicrucian Order AMORC, A-M-O-R-C, back in 1971, 50 years ago, about this time. But I was giddy at the thought of becoming a member of an honest-to-goodness occult society of students and adepts. My brother Mark uh, had joined the organization, which advertised in magazines such as Fate and Popular Mechanics. He had joined a number of months earlier and had shared a few of his experiences. I knew I was signing up for a correspondence course, an ongoing series of monographs that taught ancient occult principles and exercises. I knew I was to faithfully study these monographs every Thursday night in the privacy of my own home temple. I knew, let's see, hang on for a second. I knew that my study sessions would involve a certain amount of ceremony a little candle lighting, incense burning, chanting, and meditation. Just the kind of spooky stuff white-eyed 24-year-old fledgling mystics like Lon Milo Duquette was looking for. My first monograph arrived unceremoniously in, uh, in the mail on a Thursday. A cosmic synchronicity I could only interpret as a direct message from the gods. I nervously waited for the sun to go down so that I could open the envelope and let the magic begin. After dinner, I showered and dressed in my karate gi, the closest thing I had to a magical vestment. Constance, who was pregnant, with our son-to-be and as yet unnamed uh, baby. Actually, I'll read, the, read that again because we didn't know in advance if it, if it was a he or a she. And we didn't name him for about three days after he was born. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Constance, who was pregnant with our soon-to-arrive and as yet unnamed baby, agreed to busy herself in the kitchen and living room while I sequestered myself in the bedroom with my candles, my incense, and my first mystical monograph. I opened the envelope, smelled the contents. Yes, I smelled the contents. It's like every new book that I get when the publisher sends me my the first copy of a new book I get. The first thing I do is open it up and I go, what's with that? Anyway, uh, 
I read uh, the few introductory words and realized that I was to undergo right then and there a ceremony of initiation. When I was a youngster in junior high, the word initiation was a word to be feared. Initiation meant institutionalized bullying and torment inflicted by older students upon naive and fearful underclassmen. A Midwestern junior high in school initiation meant getting your pants pulled off and hoisted up the flagpole or discovering too late that someone had sprinkled itching powder in your jock. Of course, there are other more innocuous kinds of initiations in life. But at the very least, the word implied a preliminary fee or penalty one must pay before presuming to be part of an organization. Initiate, as a verb, means to begin. Initiation is simply a commencement. A magical in initiation marks the beginning of a change, a mutation, an evolutionary step in the life of the magician, who, if all goes well, will exit the initiatory chamber a different person from the one who blindly entered. Spiritual evolution is a series of these commencements. The magician formally recognizes the beginning of each new phase as he or she grows step by step, degree by degree, in wisdom and understanding. Formal initiatory societies were very popular in ancient Egypt, Greece, and various other Mediterranean and Asian cultures. The rites of initiation offered a, a, the more, a more intelligent, elite, and esoteric spiritual experience than could be offered by the more crude and superstitious religions of the masses. Arguably, the most successful of the ancient initiatory societies was centered in the Greek city of Eleusis. The Eleusinian mysteries celebrated the agricultural mysteries of the goddess Demeter and her daughter Persephone for the better part of 2,000 years. The Eleusinian mysteries themselves had developed from far older Mycenaean agricultural cults and the Egyptian rites of Isis and Osiris. The archetypal text that set the standard and the formula for many of the initiatory societies was the Egyptian Book of the Dead, a magical text that on the surface presumes to counsel the recently deceased on how to navigate the obstacles and challenges of the afterlife. In the timeless moments of the death coma. In doing so, the Book of the Dead also reveals the magical formula for the graduated process of self-induced conscious ex consciousness expansion. The formula of initiation by degree. I'm going to move this light here a little bit. It's bothering me. Speculation about what actually went on during the ancient initi initiation ceremonies fills the pages of many occult books, some good, some laughably bad. And don't ask me to name them, please. Oddly enough, the process of speculation in and of itself is a vicarious initiatory experience. Now, that's important especially to those of us who do a great deal of reading and don't have a chance to interface with uh, other people 
who could serve as initiatory officers, initiation officers, and things like that. We do a lot of reading, and um, uh, sometimes we feel guilty that, oh, I'm just an armchair magician or uh, because I'm just reading about this stuff. But if you play your cards right, you can get a lot out of that. So I'm going to read that again. Oddly enough, the process of speculation in and of itself is a vicarious initiatory experience. For in order to even contemplate the dynamics of an initiation, one has to put oneself in the place of both the candidate and the initiator. To its credit, Amorc, Amorc's little correspondence course ceremonies of self-initiation were artfully crafted and presented in such a way that if the candidate was sincere and open to the moment, a degree of true initiation could take place. I can't speak for anyone else, but I can tell you without evasion, equivocation, or reservation that on that Thursday evening in 1971, I was profoundly sincere and open to the moment. I allowed the printed words on the page of that monograph to transport me to my own inner temple of initiation. There I met myself for the first time. There I pledged with every fiber of my being to discover the powers of my own soul and to use those powers to attain enlightenment and spiritual liberation for the benefit of myself and every monad of existence. I was ready for that moment. All I needed was a little shove, a little help and encouragement from those few words. The monograph may have given me the shove, but the initiation itself was entirely my own, a homemade initiation. In the 40-some years, well, that's when this was written, in the 50 years since that quiet evening, I've been the candidate in many initiation ceremonies. Some of them have required the dramatic and magical talents of many officers and have taken place in historic and richly adorned temples of gold and marble. Others have taken place in modest lodge rooms with only a handful of officers. Some have taken place under the stars or in converted garages and residential living rooms. In several of my initiations, the presiding officer was visibly intoxicated and the assisting officers ineptly read their lines from scripts they were seeing for the first time. No matter what the circumstances, I considered the experiences true initiations. Now you're probably wondering how on earth can someone consider a ceremony conducted by a drunken master assisted by untrained and incompetent officers to be a true spiritual initiation? My answer is simple. It's because all true initiations are self-initiations. No matter how simple or elaborate the ceremony, no matter how skilled or, in, or competent the officers, the initiation itself takes place in the temple of your own soul. Your application is your sincerity, and your initiation fee 
is your desire and ability to be open to the moment. My little Amorc monograph initiation was a real initiation. It couldn't have been more real, more effective, or more magical if I had been lying in the sarcophagus of the king's chamber of the great pyramid of Giza, and the presiding officers had been Lao Tzu, Buddha, Pythagoras, S. L. McGregor Mathers, Alistair Crowley, Mark Twain, and the Dalai Lama. All initiation ceremonies I have subsequently passed through in my life have simply been amendments, booster shots to that first homemade initiation in my bedroom temple on that Thursday night so long ago. So, how about you? Are you feeling sincere and open to the moment? Have you reached a season in your life when all you need is a little shove to push you into the deep end of the pool of homemade magic? If your answer is yes, then you have just applied and have been accepted by the hidden hierophants of the ancient and mystical order of homemade magicians, the A-A-M-O-O-H-M. <laughs> you may now open your initiation monograph. Well, we'll open that monograph tomorrow at 10 o'clock for chapter four the homemade ritual of self-initiation. I hope you're enjoying these little readings. Uh, like I repeatedly say, that they're keeping me sane uh, throughout this uh, uh, pandemic and hopefully recovery from the pandemic. Anyway, continue to be safe, be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.